Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am very excited to show you this game I just played, and it really had an exciting ending, so I hope you'll enjoy it as well. This was against a uh, subscriber who has been watching these videos, who said they watched all of my videos, so that's always exciting to get to play with someone like that. Uh, their handle is The Board Is Set. And um, it was just, it was a really fun game. So I wanted to share it with you. They particularly requested playing free people and they thought that uh, they wanted, they wanted to not use any action tokens. So we didn't use action tokens. Uh, you can see they started with Path of the Woes is there and back again. And I had Fighting Urkai and Lidless Eye. I don't find Lidless Eye particularly useful, but Fighting Urkai is certainly a convenient um, card early on, really anytime. So I allocate one eye and um, and only roll one muster, and they get a perfectly reasonable start. Obviously, nice, nice flexible two movement. Um, I guess not flexible, but um, two musters, two movement is fine. And now I'm I'm sort of trying to figure out what to do with this. It seems to me that I'm not going to play either of these cards. So when they pass, I start by drawing. I draw a strategy card and I get Orcs Multiplying again. So that's quite, quite useful. And I feel like, okay, maybe I can now, my strategy is take these Orcs from Dol Guldur, maybe go after Lorien, and then these units from Baradur all the way up to uh, Dew. And maybe that's a good plan. I only have one muster, but I have decent army movement. So, um, maybe I'll have time to sort of get, I'll have these armies moving while they're moving. Eventually, hopefully next round, I'll be able to roll enough musters. So that's my plan. I start by, oh, they start by moving and I miss them. And then I move my armies and I get this unit from North Dunland into Moria because I want to be able to play Fighting Urk High in Lorien. And then uh, they move again and I miss them again. So, you know, nice movement for them to start with. And then I continue moving my armies around. I only bring in two regulars, and maybe this is a little bit of a waste, but I only bring in two regulars because I'm planning on playing Orcs Multiply again next round and then um, moving these units in, and I'll be able to leave one in Moria and um, one in Dol Golder, and then I'll have a full stack of 10 in Dimeril Dale. So that's why I leave one regular in Moria. Um, and then they muster the elves one toward war, which is sort of what I was expecting. Um, and then my plan now, uh, I move once, and my plan is if they muster the elves again, I'm going to get Sauron to war because I think I'll be able to put the elves to war next round. And if I can't, then at least I delay the elves getting to war and give my armies time to besiege them before they're at war. So it's sort of win-win for me. Um and then they do muster the elves towards war. And then this is the moment. And I wonder if any of you who have been watching this noticed my mistake. Because the Isengard unit, um, Isengard is not at war. So I cannot actually move this regular from North Dunland into Moria. That's entering a new faction's territory with a unit that's not at war. So all of this was... Um, it was illegal for me to get this army to Dimrod Dale. And it's not a common thing that happens because usually Isengard, you get to war so soon. So I, I wasn't thinking about it. Um, and then at this point, we're like, okay, what should we do? What should we do? We ended up deciding to just rewind it. So we just rewound to the point of um, basically when this hunt happened. So we let the hunt happen successfully. Um, and then we just we just played it, played it out from here. So now, without cheating, <laughs> what, uh, which I obviously didn't do on purpose, uh, what, what would we do here? And, um, and you know, I, I felt so bad when I noticed it in Dimmerald Dale. I was like, oh man, I've cheated. Um, obviously, the right thing to do if you notice a mistake is to just say, hey, look, I made a mistake, right? Like, I, I could have, I guess, played, uh, you know, played on with the mistake. And it's sort of not immediately obvious that it was illegal. Um, we both missed it when it happened for multiple turns. Um, but generally, if you notice a mistake, um, you know, just say it. I, I think that people are playing in good faith in general. And, um, 
you know, it's much more fun to play a game by the rules and even experienced players. Obviously, I'm an experienced player. Uh, you can still sometimes miss rules or make mistakes. So, um, you know, I, I think this was a perfectly fine solution. Uh, it's not going to change that much. You'll see what plays out. Instead of moving this um, North Dunland unit, um, I just move uh, Far Harad to Near Harad instead. Um, and then... I uh, continue with my movement. I decide to bring two from Dimroll Dale because now when I have, I'm going to have one fewer unit. So I'd rather leave the one extra in Dole Golder um, once I play Orcs Multiplying again. Um, and then they still muster the elves twice towards war. And um, my armies ended up basically where they were. Instead of this regular in Dimroll Dale, I have my armies from Far Harad to Near Harad. So curious to know what you have done it feels a little lame to me to move just two units um i don't know maybe, maybe it was dumb to to bring these units over and maybe i should have just gotten going with dol golder i'm curious what you would have done g given the actual rules of the game would you have gotten sauron to war would you have gotten isengard to war um <clears throat> how would you have how would you have played this so this is the way i ended up i wonder how efficient it was Okay, so um, perfectly happy to see a red tile. Monsters Roused is a useful combat effect, and they draw Kindle of Glorfindel and Bilbo's Song. Not particularly great cards here. Um, I roll three musters this round, so obviously that's really nice for me. They get um, one muster so they can put the elves to war, but then there's not really that much they can do afterwards. Um Maybe they muster one more time with this Will of the West, but then they're only moving once against one eye. So um, they move once and are safe. And then I get uh, Isengard to war. And then I start moving my armies. And now I have some really nice army movement. What targets do you attack? Obviously, this army is coming up to um, Woodland Realm. I, I didn't roll any Palantirs. And so I felt... Um, like maybe it's not worth playing Orcs Multiply again because this army is probably enough. I I'm not sure. Maybe it would have been best to use a muster to play Orcs Multiplying again um, and then do all this. My thinking was I definitely want to spend two musters on Saruman and then I'll have one more muster left. And with that muster... If my opponent puts the elves to war, I can get the Witch King this round. So it's a strong disincentive for them to put the elves to war while I still have a third muster available. And if I spent it on Orcs Multiplying again, then there's no they don't have any risk of me getting both Saruman and the Witch King. I'll have to pick between one or the other. So my thinking is, well, if at least if they're going to get the elves to war, I'll get the Witch King out of it. Um... So, so I decided after all of that planning um, to not play Orcs Multiplying again and to get this army out of Dol Guldur moving along. So I don't know if this was right or not. Uh, that's what I ended up doing. So they pass. I now have merged up my armies. Um, they play Kindred of Glorfindel. I, you know, that's fine. I, yeah, it's fine. I wonder if you're going to do it anyway, like, First of all, why not pass a little bit more? And second of all, why not play this before doing your one movement? Um, because that way, if I happen to hit on the six, which is unlikely, but if I do, then um, they you get to draw the extra card. So anyway, they play Kindle of Glorfindel, they get the elite, and then they redraw Red Arrow and Last Battle. Um, Last Battle, obviously, very useful combat effect, um, and it's also great to see scouts. So um, yeah, so they can get potentially a North unit in there. We'll see what they do. So I get my armies moving, and now what, what do you do? Uh, clearly, the half movement is from South Rovanian to Northern Rovanian, but um, what do you do with this extra half movement? So Gondor is sort of pretty quiet. Um, do I move into Umbar? Do I go to West Herondor? Do I merge up these armies in Nern and Gorgoroth into Minus Morgul and then have a stack of 10? Do I get these um, I, these units in Southrun going? I don't know. Um, in the end, 
what I decided to do, I'd love to hear what you would have done. What I ended up doing was moving this one regular from North Dunland into Moria, like I had wanted to do last round, um, which is obviously inefficient, right? Because I had already moved from Moria to Dimmerdale. Um, my thinking is I have fighting Uruk high. I want to be able to play that in Lorien. That was my whole idea from the beginning. Um, having one extra regular in here, now that I didn't bother playing Orcs Multiplying again, having one extra regular could help in Lorien, especially if they managed to muster up some. Um, my further thinking is I'm going to use one muster clearly to get Saruman. I'm then going to be left with one army muster at the end of the round. Maybe they're going to muster the elves, at which point I can get the Witch King. But if they don't muster the elves... Because they're probably going to move with this with this palette with this um, will of the West. Um, if they don't, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. If they don't get the elves to war, then they're mustering somebody with with the with this muster, right? Or maybe they're playing a strategy card or something. Um, but then I'm going to have this army muster, and at that point, I'm going to get these units from Northern Rovanian into Old Forest Road, and I'm going to have another half muster that I might as well do something with. And so that was my plan. Um, I, I really don't know what was best. So I'd be curious, very curious to hear what other people would have done. Um, I, I had a lot of flexibility with these moves. So um, they ended up moving, you know, given that I don't have any minion yet, um, spending a ring, you might consider spending a ring to move in the hopes that you kill off Gandalf, but then I just wouldn't get a minion. Uh, I would just wait till my last action to get Saruman and then you don't get Gandalf. So I think this is absolutely the right way of doing it. And um, this is the one silver lining for Shadow if you don't get two musters round one. Because while, of course, I'm happy to get Saruman round one, if I don't, this also lets me delay Gandalf another round. So they move and they get missed. So I've had four hunts so far Two, two dice, two at six, two at five, one at six, one at five. No hits yet. Um, so that is, the hunt is going well. I don't know exactly what the odds are, but I, I think they're like 30% chance, something like that, maybe even worse. Um, let's calculate. It's fun to calculate. Um, so we're going to calculate the chances. So we have um, two misses on round one is five divided by six uh, times itself. So 70% chance of missing on the first roll times four out of six times four out of six. That's chances of missing just on round one. So I have 70, only a 30% chance of missing round one. And then uh, times five out of six times four out of six. So 17% chance. So only a 17% chance of missing all four of those hunts. Okay, you know, obviously that's nice, but um, not not so crazy, right? Not, not totally, totally crazy. Okay, anyway, um, they decide to muster the elves. So now the elves are at war. And now I have a choice between getting my um, armies into position to attack the elves or um, getting the Witch King. And my whole plan was to get the Witch King, and it's great to get the Witch King turn two. Um, my plan is they're not going to roll that many musters next round. Um, and now that I have, um, now that I have minions, they're going to want to move and kill off kill off um, Gandalf to be able to get Gandalf back. So um, yeah, so I get the Witch King, right? They're not expected to get that many musters on only four dice. So I have nine dice to four. That's always very nice. I um, discard Little Asai. That's pretty easy. What did they end up discarding? They discard... Uh, I didn't see what they just discarded. Um, sorry, I missed it. You probably saw. Hopefully it was a reasonable choice. Um, can I see in the discarded cards what they discard? Um, nope, I don't know. I can't see it. Weird. Okay, moving on. Um, I only roll one eye again, 
and I roll a bazillion attacks. So this is obviously a great roll for me. Very happy to see that many attacks. And this, I think, is a pretty good roll for them also. Um, this is a situation where now they can really consider running with the Fellowship, and they can even use a ring on this um, Palantir to uh, move a third time if they don't manage to kill off Gandalf. So that's what I would be thinking about. Obviously, it's nice to be able to um, not have to spend a ring, but given that you have a Will of the West showing and you have a nice situation for moving the Fellowship a bunch, that's probably what I would do. So um, they start by playing there and back again. This is okay. Um, they put Gimli in Woodland Realm. I think if it were me, I would be more... I mean, they do get to draw another redraw character card. Um... I would be more inclined to maximize my chances of getting Gandalf. And now that I'm looking about it, looking at it, oh, look at this. So they're at four movement with the fellowship. Um, they can move once, go to five. Ooh, this is cool. They can move once and go to five. And then once they're at five, they're in back again, can put Strider in Dol Amroth. Uh, right, because it's five plus three for Strider plus one for there and back again. And that way, um, you know, you get you get Aragorn. Um, and if you have 10, so you can move a second time, right? So you have two, you have two um, character dice. You can move once, then move the second time. If you, if you don't, if you get missed twice, then um, you're now at six movement. That's... Uh, plus three for Strider, plus one more for there and back again. That's that's 10 movement. You can go um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can go all the way to Minas Tirith, which may be a little more solid place, safer place for um, Strider, given that um, maybe Corsairs could come at some point. So, um, and also Minas Tirith is a, a single character movement away from um, Rohan, which lets you then, if you draw into Dead Men of Dunharrow, go, come back from Rohan into Pilar Gear. So I think probably what I would have done here is moved once with the Fellowship, seen what happened, probably moved twice with the Fellowship. If Gandalf is still not dead, then I would probably um, separate using there and back again. And there are four cards in the character deck that allow you to separate companions. I think four, maybe even five. Um... I will go alone there, back again, Gua here, um, we prove the Swifter, maybe just four, maybe five, I feel like there's a fifth, um, and so getting these Palantirs are actually a very efficient way, potentially very efficient way of getting Strider, uh, I mean getting Aragorn, okay, so, um, yeah, and the other thing about there back again, I, I don't know, it just it doesn't really help defend Woodland Realm that much. I would be more inclined if I were gonna play if I were gonna play a card here, maybe the red arrow, so that um these units from Edoras get powered up. Um maybe just Vile of Galadriel, because that's always a great card. Um Yeah. Alright, it does make me a little more scared of Woodland Realm. Um if I had other cards in here, like Heroic Death or um, Daring Defiance or something like that, maybe I would consider that. Also, I was thinking maybe what was going to happen was they would then play. Um, when I saw when I saw them do this, I was thinking they might also play Book of Mazarbul and get Gimli from Woodland Realm into Erebor. But um, you could have just moved the fellowship once and then you would have been able to do that. Okay, anyway. Um, so they redraw the great company. Ah, oh, look at that, right? And now you can get Strider, like even more reason to get Strider um, down there, right? Okay, um, I go ahead and move my armies. Oh, and by the way, I mentioned, you know, they weren't gonna roll very mus many musters. This is very, you know, I don't know exactly what the odds are, but it's it's not like crazy. Maybe they would have gotten one muster, but it's, it's certainly not crazy like this. All right, so then they move and I miss, and then I attack Lorien. And then they start passing, and I put Woodland Realm under siege. And then um, I attack Woodland Realm. They play Daylight very effectively, but I still get two hits. I press and then um, kill off Gimli. So, yeah, I mean, what did Gimli do there? Um, yeah. Okay, and now um, 
my thinking is I have these four dice. I have a muster and then three army musters. My thinking is there are, there's a relatively low chance of uh, Gandalf showing up, right? Only one out of three chance that I hit that I hit. Um, and then I can smash into Helm's Deep right now um, with with these armies north think before the units from Edoras have a chance to reinforce Helm's Deep because they're almost certainly going to move. And then, yeah. So, okay. So I uh, muster up and then they move here and then I hit them. <laughs> so this is the first time in that I don't actually want to hit them. I mean, I guess I didn't really want to hit them last, last uh, action um, either. So, okay. So I hit them. At least they get revealed. That's something. And then um, Gandalf dies and then a zero is drawn. So Strider shows up as guide, and now I have to figure out, okay, do I want to risk Ents? As it turns out, they don't have Ents, but I have about a th they have about a 50% chance of having drawn an Ent um, by the start of next round with five cards. So would you have risked it here, knowing that it's 50-50 chance that they have an Ent? Um, my thinking is I really don't want to lose fighting Uruk High because fighting Uruk High is not playable if Saruman dies to Ents. So um, I decide instead that I'm going to muster up and I will muster um, using uh, the voice because um, I'm now thinking, well, if I take out Woodland Realm and I take out Lorien and I take out Helm's Deep, that's six. I can then get the four cities and then um, North and South Dunland can um, come and take the Shire. That's that's my thinking. Um, or whatever, it's useful to have some armies here and be flexible. I think um, I also have Shadow Lengthen, so maybe I could Shadow Lengthen them in. All right, I put another Elite into Orthanc. So I've just spent a long time sort of mustering up Orthanc by hand. Uh, Maybe I could have been doing other more productive things. I could have mustered the South Runs and Easterlings toward war. I could have gotten these armies in Mordor uh, out to attack Gondor at some point. I, I'm not sure. Um, okay. So obviously I don't love that they have Gandalf now, which is really the soonest they could have gotten it given when my minions showed up. And um, they have that I'm, I'm guessing they're going to discard the gray company i discard breaking of the fellowship i'm always happy to see return to valinor not because of the card effect but because uh deadly strife is great and um yeah so they discard gray company and then i roll three more eyes and no characters so my plan was probably to Nazgul search to get the Witch King over to Lorien to do something useful. Um, but I didn't roll any characters this round or, or Palantirs, characters or Palantirs. So that is quite unlikely on eight dice. Um, what are the chances of rolling zero Palantirs and zero characters on eight dice? So that is, we're doing a bunch of probability this round. All right. Um, that is four divided by six because there are four sides that don't have a palantir and don't have a character to the eighth power. Four percent. Yeah. So that is an unlikely situation uh, to not have that. Okay. So they get a perfectly nice roll. Uh, they're just going to be able to keep moving along with the fellowship. Their corruption is fine. They had six movements. Uh, already so they and they got the key army um they got this really nice army muster right they needed an army movement to get these units from Edoras into Westamnet um and I I guess they didn't really have time to play the red arrow right like if they had already played the red arrow that might have been nice okay um I muster again one more time so that I have four units left over in Orthanc after I move out with five um they hide the fellowship and they mentioned this was they felt like this was a mistake that they should have um used a palantir instead to hide so they had three character dice left instead of two characters and a palantir which i think is correct because they're going to have to use one character 
to um, move the the armies from Westumnet into Helm's Deep after the units retreat from Fords of Eyes into Westumnet. Um, if I had a um, swarm of bats, I certainly would play it here, but I don't. I attack into Fords and they play scouts. And I leave four hit points in Orthanc because the chances of them having ants at this point are high. Then they use a character movement to get into Helm's Deep. And um, then I decide to move some armies around. And I know at this point that I'm going to play uh, Shadow Lengthens. So I don't know exactly what um, what's best here. I had um, two armies and an army muster. And so, yeah, I just don't, I don't know what I would do. I moved from North Dunland to South Dunland, and then uh, I moved from North Rune to uh, Vale of Karnan with the plan of playing Shadow Lengthens to get a full stack of 10 and Fords of Aizen and um, South Rune into Vale of Karnan. Maybe a reasonable plan. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, I go ahead and do that. Oh, they move... And, uh, sorry, they get hit with a three and they randomly lose Bormir. So, um, yeah, I think when a three gets rolled, uh, gets drawn, it makes sense to lose a random companion. Um, if you happen to hit a Hobbit, you could have gotten them into Helm's Deep, which certainly would be nice. So, um, yeah, I think that makes sense. You don't want to lose Strider, but it's a three. So at least that's efficient if you do. Uh, now they play Red Arrow here. Um, okay. That's fine. I... Uh, I wonder about um, File of Galadriel. I might be tempted to save another Scouts because if Dale gets attacked, I'd really like to retreat into Erebor. I don't have Dane Ironfoot's Guard yet. So, yeah, I probably would save this for the combat effect and then um, either play File of, Gal of Galadriel or Guards of the Citadel. Okay, um... I attack into Helm's Deep, and that's that round. All right. Um, this is interesting. These are a lot of these are nice cards. Um, what would you what would you discard here? The fellowship is three moves away from um Mordor. Um I did draw into Rage of Dunlandings. My plan was to go for the four cities, but I ended up moving these units out of North Dunland to reinforce my attack on Helm's Deep since um, the free people managed to defend Helm's Deep really nicely. Um, what do you end up discarding? So I was very tempted to discard um, Palantir, but I thought, you know what, if I roll a bunch of Palantirs, maybe it's useful to play it. And um, I don't know, do I really need... I mean, Relentless Assault is a good card effect, but maybe I don't really need it um, as much as I need sort of flexibility for what happens with rolls. I'm happy with Deadly Strife, and if necessary, I can play Rage of Dunlendings as a combat effect. So um, I end up discarding King is Revealed, which, again, Relentless Assault is a very good combat effect, but I just didn't think I was going to play it. All right, I allocate one eye, roll none, and then I get two Palantirs. And they only get one movement and one uh, Will of the West. So if they're going to make it in, first of all, they have to not be revealed. Um, and second of all, they have to... Um, They have to, sorry, they have Strider, so being revealed is probably okay. Um, but but if I manage to get Cruel Weather, then they're going to be then they're going to be stuck out. So um, obviously my chances aren't great of getting to Cruel Weather, but given that I have two Palantirs, um, I'm going to have some chances of cycling into it. So I'm at 19 uh, character cards right now. They start by moving, which is great. They're safe. Um, I play Palantir of Orthanc here with a character because I want to save my Palantirs to get the maximum card draw out of Palantir of Orthanc. Um, and then they move again, and then they're safe again. So obviously that's really nice for them. They've gotten a lot of safe movements. I haven't had a lot of um, eyes in the pool other than last round, in which case I hit them. So, um, And now I um, play my Nazgul Search. So... 
I want to try and install them. I want to start cycling my character cards. Maybe it's a mistake. And I also want to reposition my Nazgul so I can take out Lorien. I have Fighting Urukai. I managed to get that unit in there. They haven't managed to reinforce Lorien. Like, they didn't play Power too great. I would love to take care of Lorien while I can. All right, so they get revealed. I redraw dead, dreadful spells. Um, they hide. And then I play Fighting Urukai with a Palantir. And the rule is you don't draw for the Palantir of Orthanc until the very end of the action. So after this whole combat, I'm going to get to draw for the Palantir of Orthanc. All right. I also have, I redrew into Devilry of Orthanc, another combat card that I can play because I have this little regular here. And um, yeah, so I'm going to play that. And then I'm going to cycle yet another character card. So I get two hits, they get two hits back, um, I get some hits, and then I think in the end, they play Heroic Death on round three, when they only have a single regular, um, and then I only get one hit, so they manage to um, go to round four, I press, and um, on ten dice, I miss, and uh, they get a hit. So I didn't manage to take Lorien. Obviously, I've weakened it significantly. It's down to a single regular. Um, and I cycled two character cards. So I drew Foul Thing from round one, Witch King. And I drew um, Dread and Despair from the Palantir. I mean, I drew Grand um, for the Palantir. So I've managed to cycle a good number of cards. The fact that this regular has not been defeated means I have another chance of cycling. Um, they go ahead and move now, which fine. Um, you know, you could wait, but if you wait too long, then I could play something like foul thing and reveal you. So, all right. So I miss on this roll. And now we know if I manage to get to, um, cruel weather, I will be able to stall them because they've already used a ring. So, um, I get to attack again into Lorien. And I play Foul Thing. Obviously, it's nice to get to play Foul Thing as the card effect, but it doesn't give me a chance to um, delay them, right? It just inflicts more corruption. And the Fellowship is pretty healthy right now. So I'm inclined to um, just sort of push my luck a little bit, see what I can get in terms of um, another character card. And then if I end up playing Ring is Mine, okay. Like, yeah, foul thing is good. Uh, and there are three ones in there. So I, I don't know. This this was this was a tough combat card choice. I maybe should have played Dread and Despair for Grand, but I feel like Grand is really nice to get to turn a Palantir into an attack, a very good attack. Um so and I wanted to save Rage of the Dunlendings. I, I basically I wanted to play a character card to try and cycle more into Cruel Weather. My chances of getting it are obviously low at this point. Um, but who knows? So that's my thinking. Uh, I end up getting a hit and I draw the Witch King card, which is Balrog, kind of ironic after I just killed Lorien. Um, so be it. And now they pass. And because I already have a ring, um, you know, I, I am at, I feel like this army in Helm's Deep is likely able to take out, um, take out Helm's Deep. So that's going to give me six victory points. And then where do I get my other uh, four? I feel like Dale, maybe I'll have enough left over in Helm's Deep to be able to take out Edoras also before Rohan musters up too much. Um, I don't know. And then maybe I can just muster a little bit in North and South Dunland and then play the Rage. So, and Pilar Gear is obviously pretty easy to take as well with all of these Southron and Easterlings. That said, Southrons and Easterlings are not a war yet. Because I still have the Palantir of Orthanc, I'm inclined to use my ring to play um, one more card. I decide to play um, the ring is mine because clearly, like, they're getting into Mordor. Uh, it's useful to play a ring. Also, there's, I mean, play a, play a red tile. Also, there's some chance that I'll draw into Cruel Weather. And obviously, if I do, uh, that'll be awesome because I'll get to stall them. Um, only one out of 15 at this point, though I have drawn, I started at 19 at the beginning of this round. So um, I've drawn 
five character cards this round. So all things considered, my chances of drawing cool weather at some point during this turn were decent. At this point, it's low odds, but um, I still am happy to get the benefit of um, the Palantir and get the red tile in the pool. I do it in this order just, just in case I draw cool weather, um, which I do. <laughs> so um, that was a very lucky top deck. Um, but my overall strategy for the turn involved cycling for this quite heavily. So, um, in the end it was lucky, but overall in terms of the strategy for this turn, it was still lucky, but not crazy one out of 15 lucky, more like one out of uh, five out of 19, like a 25% chance lucky. Uh, okay. So obviously that's great. And then, um, I move armies, get ready to take Pilar gear, um, my plan is just, I'm going to go for the four cities because I think with Grand, I'm going to get the Witch King over to Helm's Deep. I'm going to play Grand and then hopefully that'll leave me enough left over, um, to be able to take out Edoras, um, without too much hassle. So I muster the Southrons and Easterlings toward war. I don't want to over muster, um, but I do want to make sure I can get them to war next round. Um, so that's my thinking. Uh, they muster once into Edoras, and then I play Cruel Weather, and they're disappointed. <laughs> they're like, why did you wait? Um, I don't know. I just thought it would be more dramatic to wait. Like, there was nothing they could have done about it either way, but um, yeah. All right, so they drew into Dane. I was curious if they had Dane. I was thinking about attacking Erebor. Um, all right, so I didn't see exactly what my opponent discarded there, um, and... I allocate one eye um, and then roll no more eyes. So it's sort of been feast or famine on the eyes. And they get this uh, perfectly nice roll. They start by moving the fellowship um, and I miss. And then um, they remember that maybe they should have gotten rid of the Palantir. But since we already rolled for the hunt, I don't think it's quite... It didn't really. They didn't ask for a take back. I probably would have granted the take back if they wanted to, but um, they didn't ask for a take back. And once you've already rolled, usually you don't take back. So, and it's nice for them to not get hit. So I, I think they're okay with that. Um, uh, I go ahead and play Orc Patrol here. It's my only playable card. Like obviously, I could theoretically play Return to Valinor, but never play that card. Just use the combat effect. Um, so it's actually my only real playable card. Um, yeah, I don't know if it makes sense. The hunt pool is, you know, four out of 13 to get an eye. Otherwise, maybe useful. Obviously, getting revealed would be great. I do like getting rid of Strider, and as I whittle him down, increases the chances. And I get to redraw it. It's a free redraw. Um, it's not bad to cycle into red cards. Um Maybe the right thing to be doing here is to not worry about the fellowship with this. I mean, obviously I want to be efficient with getting the Palantir draw, but maybe I just go military. I just go all out military here because the fellowship corruption is really good. Yeah, so as I'm thinking about this more, I was tempted to use the Palantir. And this is this is so deep because if they had gotten rid of the Palantir, I don't think I would have played Orc Patrol. Um, in the end, I decide I decide to play Orc Patrol uh, and, I, and I draw an eye. Um, but even like in the best case scenario, I draw like a one reveal or something like that or two reveal. Uh, yeah, I guess it does. It does get rid of these hunt tiles. Um and I want to get rid of Strider, but yeah, I don't think, I think it's a mistake to play Orc Patrol here upon reflection because the chances of them destroying the ring next round are very low. So what I should do is just maximize my chances of getting, um, of getting five victory, po uh, 10 victory points by the end of next round. So I need to, you know, move the Witch King probably to here, to, to Helm's Deep, to be able to play um, Grand because I want to have leftover armies to take out Edoras. Um, and then this uh, Palantir can be Rage of the Dunlandings. I think it can probably be Rage, Rage of the Dunlandings, which is nice. Yeah, so, so that's a mistake. 
that's that's one one action mistake. All right, I end up redrawing Ring Wraiths are abroad, which is obviously very useful. I continue to draw character cards because I'm happy to draw red tiles at this point. Ring Wraiths are abroad, Black Captain commands. So maybe it's not crazy to get this redraw. There are a lot of useful character cards that I could be drawing here. Uh, okay, so I end up missing. They get rid of Palantir of Orthanc because I still have another Palantir. And then I muster the South Rounds and Easterlings all the way to war. Um, and then um, there's some discussion about movement. And then I play Ring Wraiths are abroad. I get the Witch King in position. And then I end up attacking into Pilar gear because um, I want to just, I'm just going to play um, Grand on Helm's Deep. And because that's the only other stronghold I plan on taking this game. And um, it avoids significantly, it avoids a combat card round one. There are a lot of nasty combat cards that shadow uh, that free people can play because um, they have Ents. So they have not drawn any Ents, but the odds of them having drawn some Ents are very good. So one of the nicest things about um, Gron, not only does it give me two free presses, but um, or three free two free presses yeah two free presses um it prevents the combat card round one so you can play something like deadly strife and know that you're going to get you know the full value out of it all right i attack into pilar gear using ring racer abroad i get a hit they get a hit um gondor is now at war um i am happy for them to use these musters um in gondor because uh, I want to take Edoras. My plan is to take Edoras, not to actually go after Dol Amroth or Minas Tirith. I'm worried about um, uh, Imrahil of Dol Amroth, Kyrdan's ships, uh, Guards of the Citadel, any of those things. And um, I just... It, that said, if they don't muster at all in Dol Amroth, maybe I'll go after it, and I still can't. So it just it gives me options. Uh, they end up mustering to Dol Amroth because if they didn't, then I would be able to like move to Lamadon and march in before they've mustered even once there. And then I play Grand. So uh, I start off with a Deadly Strife. It doesn't go that well. But then in the end, uh, this combat ends with me having uh, what? I have four elites left and one regular. So um, that's obviously good for me. And I drew into Day Without Dawn. Which is interesting because now I could play Day Without Dawn and then besiege Dol Amroth with, um, without giving them a chance to muster. But they do still have this Palantir up. So I'm thinking chances of having um, either Cirdan ships or Immerhill of Dol Amroth at this point are decent. The um, Going the city route feels uh, a bit safer. I wonder if I misplayed with... Um, my casualties and maybe I should have had two regulars here or, or like one extra regular. I don't know. Sorry. Two extra regulars instead of an elite. I could have done that. Um, all right. Anyway, I end up taking West net and threatening Dole Amroth so that they use their will of the West to muster there um, without really intending to take it. And then I use, this is kind of a weird move and maybe this is a mistake, but I use a character to take fold so that um, this army in Westamnet will be able to take out Edoras without any retreating and shenanigans like that. So I just want to take them out. Um, they end up playing, okay, they pass. I take out Edoras. I play Great Host. Um, Edoras dies. And um, then they play File of Galadriel. So... Um, my plan next round is, uh, Rage of the Dunlandings to the Shire and, um, Vale of Karnan into Dale. And I don't see a lot of ways they can mess with that. Maybe this army from Minas Tirith can come up and try and take, retake Edoras. That's possible, though it'll take quite a few moves to do that. Um... Also, maybe these armies can come and retake Pilar gear, but I can retreat the army of Lam the, the army from Lamadon back to Pilar gear, and this is a pretty big size army. So, um, I think that's pretty solid. I don't see a lot of easy ways for them to defend that. Maybe I go after Erebor. Maybe I go after Dol Amroth. 
I I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe I could have won this round if I had just attacked into Dol Amroth. And then these armies take Dale. I don't know. Maybe I don't worry about Edoras. I don't know. This was an interesting round. I'd be curious to hear what, what people would have done. I st anyway, I start mustering in um, North Dunland uh, to be able to prepare for Rage of the Dunlandings. So um, they declare into uh, Mordor and um, I draw Shelob's Lair, which is nice. And I allocate one eye and uh, I have eight dice and I... I basically need, I think I need three attacks here. I need one into Dale. I need one to move from Cardolan into South Erdluin and one to attack the Shire. So I need, I need three attacks plus like a Palantir or a Muster to be able to play Rage of the Dunlendings. Um, and... I have Day Without Dawn in case they roll a bunch of Wills of the West. I have Shelob's Lair potentially as well. So I roll uh, five eyes. <laughs> I roll five eyes and um, one attack. I think the chances of one attack are um, on eight dice are like really, really low. Um, yeah, I looked this up on any dice. One attack is only 3%. But I also would have not been able to finish this round um, on two attacks because that would have been, and that's a 15, 14% chance. So 14% chance of getting two attacks. Um, but it's it's probably even lower than that because if I had ro rolled even two musters, I can spend one muster to get the Mouth of Sauron and a second muster to um, then use the Mouth of Sauron's ability. So this is a very low probability roll. Um, I, I, I don't know exactly what the odds are to not even roll two musters. But if I had two attacks, I could um, I could do something like move from Lamadon into Dol Amroth and, and try it. And then I have um, two different Relentless Assaults which are good when you're low on leadership. And I have half orcs and goblin men. So I could put a, um, an elite into that army. Uh, it's probably not enough, uh, because I, they could like retake Pilar gear probably. Um, so I would, I, I really need three attacks. I needed three attacks this round and, and maybe I could have been more efficient. And if you're like slightly more efficient, then um, you end up just like the odds of not being able to finish when you need to finish are, are, are lower. So even like just one or two more efficiency and I would, I would even this role, I could have been able to win. Um, so, you know, that's disappointing. Uh, the orc, the orc patrol, like that play might've been the difference. Um, and obviously, oh, right. You haven't seen their role. So their role is this. <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's not good. You know, when you have a very healthy fellowship and they're not even gonna have to spend a ring, right? Like they're just moving as fast as they can, even against six eyes. And maybe if they, if I, I, I do have five eyes in the pool. So, you know, that's something. And um, I have Shelob, so I could put Shelob in. Um, but there are 15 tiles. So, yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, they move and they get a two reveal. So that's really nice for them. They take a random here. I, I would not have taken a random there. Uh, I don't think that makes sense. You can just, I, I think... Yeah, I guess you do. Yeah, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It does it does make sense to take a random because you need to whittle your companions down because if you get hit by an eye, then you're going to end up taking a lot of corruption. And so you want to be able to whittle down your companions. So that is um, almost certainly, I mean, that is the perfect draw. 
because now if he takes corruption, he can like if he gets an eye now, he can lose everybody and be down to Gollum. Um, so obviously losing Strider here would have been not as good for him, but still probably OK, given all the characters that he rolled um, and losing a Hobbit would have been less than ideal because then an eye could dish out a lot of damage without being able to soak it up from both the hobbits as well. So anyway, yeah, definitely makes sense to take a random. I was wrong about that. That's correct for sure. And um, he gets the perfect one. So that's good. And then um, I pass <laughs> as shadow because I had only three dice. And then he hides using Strider's ability and is just, just running, right? Like even against this hunt pool, um, he's running. And I think that's totally right because... Um, he's just fine with the fellowship. And, um, I was a little worried about military victory, right? Like there are ways in which, um, he can just go, like I have Moria and Moria is pretty open. Um, and these elves can walk in. It's, it's not that likely given, given the roles that he got. So, um, you know, if he had a little more army movement, he might've, but um, I'm still like a little worried about him walk, walking in. Um, given that the North is not at war, I'm probably, probably okay. I think I am okay. Um, all right. So I go ahead and play Shelob now because he's about to move the second time. I want to get the second red tile in there. And um, he moves and gets a three. So he's not revealed uh, he gets to lose Strider efficiently. Like, obviously, I, I honestly think that might actually be the best tile because even if you, maybe if you get a one, you don't lose Strider. Um, so I guess a one would be better. A two, you probably lose Strider. Um, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, it's a good tile. He's happy to lose Strider. He just loses Strider. So... This is very good so far. There are so many uh, dice in here that it's overflowing. You can't see it, but there are actually now eight dice in here. Two um, free people dice and six uh, red dice. So um, I muster here and I muster uh, units. And I this is a misplay. I should get the mouth. I, I think I was tilted at this point. Um it probably doesn't matter too much, but I think if we're maximizing chances, it makes sense to get the mouth. Uh, so yeah, but whatever. Um, I don't have anything productive to do. Oh, he moves again and gets an eye, but it's a little bit uh, too little too late because he's down to, um, he's just down to these hobbits now. And so he gets to soak up two from the hobbits and take six, putting him at seven, but he's just moved too efficiently. Um, the hunt pool is just generally okay. So I go ahead and move. My plan is the same as it was this round, which is maybe I'll be able to get to the Shire and um, uh, take out Dale. So I, I don't know. Again, maybe Dole Amroth should have gone after it. Um, yeah, I'm certainly in trouble now. He hides and now he just has to move twice. I don't even know that he has, there's another way, but, um, he has two rings still. It's just, what can I do? So I draw Isildur's Bane and that gives me a little bit of hope because now there are threes and twos. And so if I roll enough eyes and I roll and I draw an eye, then he can, um, I might be able to get him with Isildur's Bane. Um, and I, um, that's another reason to have mustered the mouth last round because it gives me one extra um, die to roll, which can turn into an eye. And maybe my way of winning is um, just stalling or, or like corruption. It's possible um, with two movement, especially if, he, if I roll enough eyes. So, um, wow, he gets the power of Tom Bombadil. So my whole plan was to go after the Shire. I had been careful to hold... Um, army cards. So I have plenty of army cards, Xanathar's Folly. Um, I had been holding half orcs and goblin men. So I wasn't worried about the, oh, right. Day without dawn. Yeah. I had plenty of army cards. I was definitely aware that Tom Bombadil was possible. Um, but obviously that takes a die. So if I'm really low on dice, like if you're old bazillion eyes, then that, that can also end up stalling you. So, um, let's see. They finally drew their first ent. 
Um, what are they going to get rid of? Uh, okay. So that's fine. Reasonable choices. Um, I hold day without dawn just in case they roll a bunch of wills of the West and, um, I get a whole bunch of musters. I didn't, again, I didn't roll a Palantir or character and I don't have any rings. So even this hope that I had for Isildur's Bane is now lost. And, um, I, I, that's another reason to have gotten the mouth of Sauron. It just increases my chances of, of having outs like this. So definitely a mistake to have not gotten the mouth of Sauron. And, um, I did roll two, two eyes. So I don't know what that, it doesn't matter because I didn't even, I didn't even roll a uh, Palantir, uh, or character. So I basically lost, uh, unless they get, um, really, unless I managed to draw a red tile. I've ha I have had red tiles in here for a while. So I'm just hoping for a red tile. They start with theirs another way, which is the right order to do it in, because then this die does not go into the hunt box, which means that eyes, instead of doing four damage, are only doing three damage um, on their second movement. So it's a it's a thoughtful way of playing it. And um, they get a two. So that's beautiful. And they were thinking about revealing here, I think, using Gollum's ability, but it's better just to take the two because this way, if um, they move and get Shelob, uh, they can then use a ring and, um, and actually destroy the ring, potentially, right? Because I'm going to get, I am going to get to um, 10 victory points this round, m m most likely, and they're unlikely to be able to retake those points from me. So, um, yeah. Okay. I get the mouth of Sauron now, and then they go ahead and move. I, yeah. Why not? Why prolong the, uh, pain? Um, seems fine. And they move and they get a two. So, um, definitely a, uh, overall very pleasant trip up Mordor. Um, obviously the eight reveal is not good for them from the eyes, but, um, the, because everything else was, was pleasant, it was really no problem. Um, and in fact, yeah, yeah. So I'd be curious to know what people thought. Um, I feel like, you know, I had overall pretty good dice. Um, let's look at statistics. So for some reason, these are correct. I don't know why sometimes there's a bug. I was a little low on combat. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, these are pretty average rolls. I don't see anything particularly notable. Um, obviously, slightly slow start with only one muster round one, but that certainly happened some games. And, um, and then I was able to get Witch King and Saruman round two. There were, there were plenty of rolls that I got, you know, zero, rolled zero eyes. Um, it's, it's just, it was a little clumpy with when the eyes came and obviously that last round or second to last round getting, um, rolling five eyes and having six in the box was, um, too many. <laughs> so, uh, I'm curious to know, uh, what you would have done differently and, um, yeah, this is a fun game. Uh, have a good rest of the day.